Dear learners, in this video, we explain the statement of Green's theorem. So, the Green's theorem is very useful to transform a double integral into a line integral and vice versa. A double integral over a plane region may be transformed into a line integral over the boundary of that region and uh, the line integral in the boundary that is the converse statement. The line integral along the boundary of a region can be transformed into a double integral over a plane region. So, now let us look into the statement of the Green's theorem. Let R be a closed bounded region in the x y plane whose boundary consists of finitely many smooth curves. We will look into these terms in detail in the later part of this video. Let f1 of x comma y and f2 of x comma y be the functions that are continuous and have the continuous partial derivatives dou f1 by dou y and dou f2 by dou x everywhere not at a single point but at everywhere in some domain containing the region r ok then in that case that is we have given some three conditions the first one is the boundary consists of finitely many smooth curves the boundary under which uh, that is that bounds the region R should contain finitely many smooth curves. Okay. Then the second condition f 1 of x comma y and f 2 of x comma y are the functions or the continuous functions not just functions they should be continuous and have continuous partial derivatives that is uh, the two partial derivatives dou f 1 by dou y dou f 2 by dou x should be continuous not at any single point but the entire region r the domain of the region containing domain containing the region r in these cases we can say that double integral over r dou f 2 by dou x minus dou f 1 by dou y d x d y is equal to the closed integral over c f 1 of f 1 d x my plus f 2 d y. Now, there are few restrictions on the region and its boundary. The region we have already said it should be it, it should be bounded by a smooth curve. Now, when it comes to the closed integral over C, what should be the positive direction of C that plays the vital role? Because you may in a planar curve, you can traverse clockwise or anticlockwise. So, now let us discuss in what direction we should traverse the region so that the two integrals will be equal. So, your C is evaluated along the entire boundary of R. We know R is a closed region. So, along all its boundary we have to evaluate C such that R is on the left side. Whenever you walk along the boundary, the region R should lie on the left side as we advanced in the derivation of the integration. Okay. Now, let us elaborate the terms that we have come across in the statement of Green's theorem. That is, we have seen, given that R is a closed bounded region and we have also used the word domain, the domain that contains the region R. So, now let us see what we mean by a closed region, a bounded region and what we mean by a domain are all those things now let us look in, in detail. Okay. So, first let us uh, come across, uh, first let us see um, the main application of Green's theorem. 
as we saw in the beginning of this video we said that uh, the green's theorem establishes the relation between a double integral and a line integral so using green's theorem we can evaluate a double integral over a planar region as a single integral evaluated along the boundary of that region so in this diagram if you take the region r whose boundary is a smooth made of uh, finitely many smooth curves smooth curves means at the point it should have only one tangent okay then as we said earlier the integral of the function in that region is same as the integral along its boundary now let us look into the terms uh, like uh, the domain closed set all those things so first let us define the connected point set so what we mean by a connected point set if any point any two points in a set can be joined using a broken line of finitely many linear segments such that all those points lie within the set again then we call it as a connected point set okay if in let's uh, have the diagram later now let us go for the open point set so once we have defined the connected point set because the domain involves it demands both connectedness and openness here is the diagram we have the in between region is not included we have two circles our region is the annular region and under what condition we claim it to be a connected point set we took two points p and q in the annular region obviously we can connect this p and q using infinitely or finitely many smooth curves that is each a linear segment and so and all those points lie within the annular region so this is a connected region in uh, higher uh, semesters we'll be learning what we mean by simply connected multiple connected such definitions will come across later okay so now let us go for the open point set when we call a set to be an open set so if every point in the set can have a neighborhood that entirely lies within the set then such sets are called open point set so now let's with the help of the diagram we can even understand it in a better way uh, the interior points even we call those points as interior points if every interior point have a neighborhood that lies entirely within the set so here we took the point p1 as a interior point we are able to get the neighborhood that lies within the set now let's go for another point p2 which also have a neighborhood that lie within the set as we move closer and closer to the boundary we can reduce minimize the radius of the neighborhood so if all the points of the neighborhood lies within the set we call it as a open set now let us define a boundary point a boundary point is a one in which all the points do not lie in the set few points may lie however smaller the radius you take at least few of the points will lie outside the set such points are called boundary points of the set here in the diagram we have shown the boundary point of a set okay. so now let us define what a domain is a domain is a open connected point set just now we came across what we mean by connected set and what we mean by an open set so a domain should satisfy both these conditions that is any two points should be connected by finitely many linear segments that lie completely inside the set 
and uh, any neighborhood of the interior point of the set should lie completely within the set then it is if these two conditions are satisfied then such a set we call as the domain now let us define what a region is so a region is nothing but a domain that includes some or all of its boundary points now in the diagram we saw how a boundary point would be so this is a open connected set in the diagram above and we also have the boundary point so if the domain along with some of its boundary points or all of its boundary points then such set are called a region and based on the inclusion of the boundary points a region may be categorized into a closed or open region so a open set we have already seen that it doesn't include the boundary all the neighborhood in the neighborhood of all the interior points should lie within the set then such sets are called open set if a region r includes all its boundary points then it is called a closed region okay so now let us define what a bounded region is because in the definition statement of the green's theorem we have or to be a closed bounded region so now let's explain what we mean by a bounded region as we all know we have learnt in uh, other topics boundedness implies uh, there should be some greater value such that all these values are always strictly less than fall within those limits similarly we can say if we can draw a circle of some radius capital r such that the entire region of our discussion lies within that circle then we call that region r is bounded of course the radius should be finite okay so if the region r can be included within a circle of sufficiently large radius then it is called a bounded region so a green's theorem can be applied only in such closed and bounded region thank you in the next video we'll verify green's theorem and see some of its applications